Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Previously, we added new methods to our Visual Studio class that we can use to run or debug the game. What we also did was that before running the game, the active scene is saved in a binary format so we can load this data in when we run the game outside the level editor. Today we are going to do just that. Load the saved scene during the game initialization and use it to construct all objects in the scene. Here in the engine project, I'm going to add a new folder for our content. And here I'll add a new header file for loading the content. Now the way I'm going to implement these methods is for when we are developing the game. So when we are not shipping the game, we are going to use these methods. Because when we are going to make a version of the game that we can ship, then we pack all the data for the game in a very different way and we have to also load and unload those in a very different way. And therefore I'm going to put this in a if def block again. So if there is no such thing defined as shipping, then we can use these methods. And otherwise we have to implement something else. But that's something for the future. For now, I'm going to implement these two methods. In this load game method, I'm just going to read the content of that binary file that we wrote to the location of this game. To use this input file stream, I need to include the fstream header file. This is a rather slow way of reading an entire file in a buffer. This basically just reads the file that we just opened here character by character and then puts them in a buffer. Here we have a pointer that's going to act as a read pointer in this buffer. And because we are reading this buffer in chunks of four bytes, I'm going to add the size of U32 to this read pointer whenever we read something. So this pointer will shift every time we read an integer or a floating point value from this buffer. For example, this line reads the number of entities, which was the first thing that we wrote to this file. And it's a four byte integer. And after reading that, we move the read pointer by four bytes. So we can read the next thing in the buffer.
Now to be able to create game entities, I need to include the headers for game entities and their components. And I'm going to use this if defined shipping here in the CPP file as well for good measure. Here we have a bit of space so we can define entity information for each entity that we read from this binary file. And then we read the entity type, which we don't use yet. And after that, there is a number of components that this entity has. And for each of those components, we are going to read the information. Now for each type of component, I'm going to have a function that we can call. And depending on the value of this component type, we can put those functions as function pointers in an array and then call them. So we will have functions of type component reader, and those are functions that will return a Boolean, depending on whether they succeeded or not. And they'll take as parameters a pointer reference to this buffer, so they can change the read pointer, and they'll fill in this entity info that we give it by reference. So for example, if you want to read data and convert that to information about a transform component, we can write the following function. So remember that this entity information has pointers to the different kind of component initialization structures. And if we are going to set those pointers, first we need something that holds that information. And second, we check if that pointer is not already set, otherwise something is wrong. So to have something that holds the information about the transform component, we will have a variable here. And we can reuse this space for different entities that we have. Here we copy bytes from this data buffer and the number of bytes that we copy is the same as the number of bytes that's required for the position component of transform. And then we move the read header and then we can do the same for rotation and scale. But before doing the rotation, of course, we need to convert the rotation from a three component Euler format to the quaternion format that is accepted by the engine. So first we will read it to this temporary location. And then we can read in the scale information.
And here we can convert this rotation to quaternion format and then write it to transform info. This is similar to the way we convert the transform component from the level editor to the engine in this engine DLL. Remember in Entity API, we have a similar function and it does the same actually. So I could as well copy paste this literally to our new read function. And the reason that I am still using this Windows specific DirectX math library is that we are only using these methods during game development. And when we are doing game development, well, of course we are using Windows, right? The level editor and Visual Studio are Windows only. So the only time that we are going to use these methods is when we are developing the game and that happens in Windows environment. So whenever we are going to load the shipping game, so when this happens here, then we have to find another way to write this in a platform independent way. But for now, this will do. The last thing that we have to do is to set the transform information in this game entity info. Oh, that's a good catch from Visual Studio that says you're going to write four floating point values to an array of three floating point values. And that's right. So we shouldn't be doing that. And then we have to write one more for script component. So here again, I'm going to add an initialization info structure for a script component. Here we are reading how long the name of the script is, and it shouldn't of course be zero. In that case, we return false. And it shouldn't also be longer than a certain value, which I arbitrarily chose to be 256 because of this. And then we read the name of the script by reading this many bytes from the buffer. And then we again move the read header by the length of this name. And then we put a zero at the end of this array, just after the last character of the script name to make it a zero terminated C string. Here we generate a hashtag 
from the name of the string. So this will become a hash value, which is basically just an integer. And we can use that as a key to look up the script creator by calling this function. And then we will hopefully get a pointer to the function that's the script creator, and we can put that pointer in the script creator in script info. And the last thing we do again is to set a pointer to this script info structure in the information for the game entity. And we return true if this script creator function pointer is not null. And then we will have to create an array of these functions so we can call them here in load game. Here in load game, when we know the component type, now we can just use it as an index into this function array that contains the reader functions for each component. Here we call these functions depending on the type of the component that we are reading. And if any of these functions returns false, we return from this function and return false. So this function will fail. And after we have read all the components, we are ready to actually create this game entity. Here we check if the information contains a pointer to a transform information because all entities have to have a transform component. And then we try to create the game entity by calling the create function and passing this information. And then we check if that resulted in an entity with a valid ID. And if that's not the case, we return false. Now we also need a place to put these entities in so that we can later on remove them. Here for each entity that we created, we put it in the array of entities. And then we check if we read all the data that's in the buffer. So the read header should be past the end of the data buffer. And after that, we return true. To unload the game, we just throw away all the entities. That's it for today. Next time we are going to call these functions during the game initialization and shutdown to load and unload the data respectively. And we are also going to write a simplistic update function for our engine so that the scripts are updated when we run the game. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!